Moses, Miracles and Meditation, Part 3 After many months of walking through the desert, the Israelites arrived at the foot of Mount Sinai. As they set up camp, Moses informed them that he needed to talk to God. He had to climb to the top of the mountain to do so. Moses had already discovered that being a leader was much harder than he had expected. The people complained that they were hungry and tired of wandering in the desert. They began to doubt they would ever reach the promised land. While Moses was away, the Israelites grew even more impatient. They lost faith that Moses would return or that God would keep his promise and deliver them to Canaan. They asked Aaron to make them a new God to worship. Collect all your gold jewelry and bring it to me, Aaron instructed. We'll melt it in a fire and create a golden calf. Excitement energized the Israelites as they worked feverishly to create their new God. The Israelites were so engrossed in worshipping their idol, they didn't notice Moses descending the mountain carrying two large stone tablets. Anger boiled up inside him as he watched them bow down and pray to the golden calf. He shouted out in disgust, his face contorted with rage. The Israelites looked up in surprise. Consumed with anger, Moses smashed the stone tablets to the ground. He ran the rest of the way and found his brother Aaron. How could you have allowed th this to happen? He demanded, rigid with fury. They got bored waiting for you and didn't think you were going to return. Forty days was a long time for them to wait, Aaron tried to explain. I've been t -t talking to God all this time. Time. He gave those stone tablets to us and I broke them because of your idolatry. They were the t Ten Commandments that he wrote himself, instructions on how we are to, to live our lives. Worshipping an idol is breaking one of his c commandments, he said with a withering glare. Moses called his people around him. Did it destroy this idol immediately, he demanded, then grind it into the dust and add it to the water. Coward, the Israelites begged Moses to forgive them. It doesn't matter if I forgive you because G God never will. When he gave me the t -t Ten C Commandments, he made it clear that he was a jealous God and you are only to worship him. If you worship idols, you will be punished along with your children for four generations. There was an anguished cry from the crowd. What else did he tell you? Aaron asked, distraught. Everyone shouted out that they also wanted to know what God had said about the Ten Commandments. Moses raised his hand to quiet them down. Stum, he barked. They obeyed and fell silent. Remember the Sabbath, Moses continued. What is the Sabbath? Another man called out. God created the world in six days, but on the seventh day he rested. It's a holy day and is called the Sabbath, Moses explained. What are the other commandments? A woman asked. Honour your mother and father. You must not kill. You must not cheat on your partner. You must not steal. Do not tell lies about others and do not have jealous thoughts, Moses finished. Two distinct camps began to form. On the one side were those that worshipped the golden calf and on the other were the Levites who didn't. Moses thought he knew what had to be done. He called the head of the Levites and instructed him to organise his men. According to the Ten Commandments, those that worshipped the golden calf had to die. Women who were suspected of cheating on their husbands were included. 3,000 people died that day. The women were either stoned to death or forced to drink the water with the crushed gold. The men were slaughtered. I'm g going b back up the mountain to ask g God to replace the broken tablets, Moses informed the remaining Israelites. After 40 days, he returned with a new set. It took Moses 40 years of wandering in the desert before he reached Canaan. When they arrived at the Jordan River, Moses looked across the water to the promised land filled with awe. He was on the final stretch and about to deliver his people to Canaan. Suddenly, Moses felt terribly sick. He was an old man and instinctively knew that he was dying. He wasn't going to make it to Canaan and he held God responsible. He hadn't spoken to God in a long time. Devastated and desperate, he lay down on the ground and closed his eyes. He listened to his uneven raspy breath until his mind was quiet from racing thoughts. 
After all I have done, why are you punishing me by not allowing me to enter Canaan? Moses asked, anger tinging his words. He continued to focus on his breath as he waited for the answer. Moses, you have made many mistakes, and believing I am forbidding you from entering Canaan is another one. What do you mean? Moses asked, confused. You forgot the warning I gave. I would always work with you, provided your cause remained noble. But you lost your way and allowed power to go to your head. When did, did I do that? Moses asked, annoyed. The first mistake you made was not sharing how to create miracles with the Israelites. You wanted to keep the joy and the power all to yourself and missed an opportunity. What opportunity? The opportunity of giving. You made the mistake of believing that giving means you will have less and others will have more or that it makes you a loser and someone a winner. The truth is that the more you give, the more you get. It's another law of the universe. That decision led you to make a series of wrong decisions and caused others to suffer. These are the reasons you are not going to Canaan. Then you are p punishing me, Moses argued. Moses, I don't punish people. People punish themselves when they make choices that are not loving and kind. Are you saying that I have m myself to blame for not going to Canaan? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. If you cause someone harm, you draw harm to yourself. If you give out kindness, you draw kindness to yourself. It's another law of the universe. What you do to others, you do to yourself. What did I d d do that was so bad that I can't go to C Canaan? Moses asked. You did several things. You told the Israelites that I was an angry, jealous and vengeful God when I am the exact opposite. I am love, truth, peace and joy. Moses, words matter. You with your stutter know that better than anyone. The last thing I want is for people to fear me and you have made them terrified. When you gave me the commandments, you told me that you are a jealous God, and if the Israelites worshipped idols, they deserved to die, Moses replied, feeling unfairly criticized. Moses, if that were true, it would make me a hypocrite if I told people not to kill and then encouraged killing. But we both know I didn't write the Ten Commandments. You did. Moses bowed his head in shame. You thought the Ten Commandments would be a way to control the Israelites, but it backfired. When you came down from Mount Sinai and saw them praying to the golden calf, you were angry that you had lost control. You were jealous of Aaron because you were afraid that he had replaced you. Out of spite, you killed 3,000 people and blamed me. Now do you understand why you are not going to Canaan? The harm you caused others caused harm to yourself. Moses nodded his head. Why did you tell the Israelites that they were not to say my name out aloud? I want people to say my name, love, truth, peace and joy over and over and as often as possible. Moses remained silent. You also told them not to commit a crime in my name and yet you did. You committed murder. Moses stared down at his feet. You said they would be punished for having a jealous thought. Moses, that's my sugar. You have no right to condemn people for their thoughts. Rather warn that jealousy is destructive and never to act on it like you did, Love explained. Moses was too embarrassed to respond. You then killed women who you only suspected of cheating on their husbands? That is a shunder, a disgrace. No one deserves to die even if they do cheat, Truth reprimanded Moses. By the way, why were men given a pass? Moses didn't have an answer. The one about the Sabbath made no sense. You believe I'm all-powerful and created the world, yet I got tired on the seventh day and needed to rest? That's funny, Peace smiled. Moses, tell them the truth how the world was created. Teach them about the Big Bang. Moses remained silent. I don't agree with the one about honoring your parents either. Sadly, there are parents who should never be parents because they abuse their children. Forcing children to honor their mother and father who abuse them would be furthering their abuse. Moses nodded in understanding. None of the suffering would have happened had you continued to do what you discovered at the burning bush. There is a name for quieting your mind and waiting for guidance. It's called meditation and it's the only commandment that's needed. How is that possible? Moses asked. 
Compare your actions after every time you meditated to when you didn't. Each time you did, you acted in a loving way. When you stopped meditating, you lost your way. Moses' eyes filled with tears. Your decision to free the Israelites was based on love. It was no coincidence that the universe created those natural disasters at the exact moment they were needed. That's because the universe has impeccable timing when it responds to the call for love. Love is that powerful. It's like the butterfly effect. If a butterfly on one side of the earth flaps its wings at a specific time, it can cause a hurricane on the other side of the world. That's awesome, Moses replied, astonished. The world is awesome and full of mysteries waiting to be discovered. Meditation is one of them. How does it work? Moses asked, fascinated. When you quiet your mind from thoughts, the ones that never stop talking, you are then able to hear your real thoughts, the ones I send. The miracle of meditation is a shift from thought to awareness, the awareness of what is kind and what is cruel. People who meditate don't need to be told that killing, cheating or lying is wrong because they will only act out of love, just as you experienced. If only I'd continue to meditate, Moses said sadly. When I meditated, I chose love and brought so much joy to the Israelites. When I stopped meditating, I chose fear and caused so much pain. My life would have been so different, he stammered. Not only your life, Moses. What do you mean, he asked. It's the butterfly effect. Your choices will affect the lives of people for generations to come. They will live in fear, not love, and this will result in intolerable suffering. Wars will be fought, pain inflicted. People will judge and condemn each other and believe they are all doing it in my name. That's a terrible way to live. How can it be stopped? Only children have the power to do so because they will understand that meditating makes miracles. They will know that love is more powerful than fear and will create a world that knows only kindness. When enough children meditate, like the butterfly, they will cause the end to all suffering. Moses looked out across to the Israelites with a heavy heart. I led them to Canaan, but at what cost, he thought to himself. He let out a big sigh. But all is not lost. The children will create a better world, he smiled confidently. Do you know how the Bible teaches children that science doesn't count? Suffering is noble and fear is necessary. It describes a God that is easily offended, has a fragile ego and a lust for revenge. My Bible stories reverse all of that. They are filled with wisdom, sprinkled with humor and cloaked in kindness. I have given Bible stories a much needed makeover in the Dear Xavier series with an enormous thank you to Sue Hickey for editing. Adam and Eve blaming and shaming. Abraham, you have got to be kidding. Rebecca, cheating isn't winning. Job, bullies are cruel, not cool. David, fighting fears. And Moses, miracles and meditation.